Mr Chair. Jane Logie. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, and I would like to make a few points in this, the, in relation to the um, substantive clause of this bill, and I missed Mr Brownlee's comment. I figure that's probably a good thing. Um, I would like to just address the um, Minister Nick Smith's comments, though, that he thought it was um, ironic we seem to have so much concern on the side of House about debt when this was about trying to keep the government's books in the black. Well, they may have noticed... <laughs> They're not in the black, Minister. <laughs> they haven't been in the black for quite a while. And I would also um, like ever, ever, oh, seven years, gosh, they still haven't managed it. Sorry, Minister. Salt in the wounds, I imagine. But I would like to just point out to this House, if we're looking at debt, that actually a little bit of a history lesson. And I do think it is very relevant to this piece of legislation and what this bill is doing, is that government debt per capita in 1990 was um, per household or oh, per capita was $10,423. Um, no, that is household. Sorry. And in 2008, it was $2,408. This is government debt per capita. And in 2014. Now, under this government's watch, it is $13,289. So for a government that's supposedly so concerned about the government's books and levels of debt, you have been overseeing a massive increase in the level of government debt from the lowest, a very low level when you came to power of only $2,408 per person. But, and I want to also call out both of the main parties, actually, in this House, around the trend we have seen on household debt, of individual debt in this country, which is specifically um, relevant to this bill. In 1992, the household, average household debt in this country was $33,920. And now in 2015, the average household debt is $128,050. And that has been inflation adjusted. So we see here was a pattern where in fact, I would argue that government per capita debt went from, I think, to higher levels down to very low levels because it had been transferred to the individual. And we are seeing that in the very high levels of personal debt through student loans and increasing in housing through speculation and the government's lack of management of the housing market to unsustainable level of personal debt. And now we're seeing under this government also escalating um, government debt. So both sides of those picture, of that picture, are doing badly. They're not focused on getting into surplus. They're not focused on the well-being of our society as a whole. And I do want to make a point here around um, income. Sorry? Letting the professor have a go? Well, um, we claim our knowledge in different ways in this party. Um, I would like to just talk a little bit about intergenerational inequality in relation to this bill and um, to reference some common understandings of um, generational wealth and distribution. And just thinking again about the situation we're in in New Zealand and the importance of saving schemes after so much um, of the costs of participating in society have been passed on to individuals, is there's a common understanding that wealth distribution is strongly affected by life cycle. It makes sense that when you're younger, you earn less, um, you have less wealth and there's an expectation that you'll accumulate that over time as you pay off your student debts, that you've got the ability to earn more and that you get your house and you pay it off. And so there you get to, over that cycle, increase your wealth. Well, it, I just want to think about that. That's the traditional way it's been done and that we've thought of it. Well, the reality is now the average woman who has a university degree will be 50 before she pays off her student debt. <laughs> and we have increasing unlikelihood of ever being able to buy a house 
for young people in this country. It is the abandoned generation. And now on top of this, Mr Chair. I call Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, sir. This will, this will be a, uh, a short point of order. And again, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank 